Science 5, Interaction in Estuaries and Intertidal Zone. Objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the biotic and abiotic factors in these ecosystems and classify the different interactions in the estuaries and intertidal zone ecosystems. Estuaries and intertidal zones make up an ecosystem. Living and non-living things in these environments interact with each other. They exhibit feeding relationships that enable the nutrients and energy to cycle through them. An ecosystem is composed of biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components refer to organisms that are living things, which include crabs, shrimps, snails, and mussels. Abiotic components are the non-living factors in an ecosystem, which include water, air, soil, sunlight, and even rocks. Organisms in aquatic ecosystems have relationships with other organisms in order to survive. The relationships that exist among organisms in the estuarine and intertidal zones include competition, predation, commensalism, mutualism, and parasitism. These interactions may have negative or positive effects on the species. Mutualism. This refers to a give-and-take relationship taking place between organisms in which two organisms help each other to survive. An example of this is the interaction between a clownfish and a sea anemone. The clownfish lives among and is unaffected by the stinging tentacles of the sea anemone. The clownfish receives protection, while the sea anemone's tentacles collect food particles and then digest the remains and provide adequate meals in return. This refers to an interaction in which one organism is helping another without harming it. An example of this is a hermit crab and sea anemone, in which it lives among and is unaffected by the stinging tentacles of the sea anemone. The hermit crab receives protection while the sea anemone does not benefit or is affected. Competition. This refers to an interaction in which organisms compete for food and space. For example, sponges compete with corals for space. Algae compete with plants for sunlight, thus growing on the surface of the water. Competition is essential for the survival of organisms. Predation. It is an interaction between two organisms of unlike species in which one of them acts as predator that captures and feeds on the other organism that serves as the prey. Large sea creatures prey on fish and other small creatures. Parasitism. This is a relationship in which one organism is harmed as the other gets the benefits. An example of this is roundworms on fish. Roundworms get the nutrients from the intestines of fish. By absorbing their nutrients, they are taking the fish's food for themselves to supply for their needs. Because the worm benefits from receiving the food and the fish suffers, it is an example of parasitism. How do living things get the energy they need? The sun is the source of energy for all living things. Green plants are primary producers that can change sunlight energy into food energy. Producers are called autotrophs, which means that they can make their own food through photosynthesis using energy from sunlight. Some producers in estuaries are phytoplankton, algae, and mangroves. They are eaten by other organisms such as animals or also known as the consumers. Consumers are organisms that cannot make their own food. They are called heterotrophs because they obtain food from other organisms rather than produce the food by themselves. All heterotrophs are consumers and are classified by the type of organisms they eat and their place in the ecosystem. Consumers are classified according to the food they eat. A. Primary consumers are herbivores or animals that eat plants only. An example would be plant plankton eaten by mussels or shore crabs. B. Secondary consumers are called carnivores or animals that eat meat. An example would be shore crabs that may be eaten by sea anemone. Mussels may be eaten by purple sea star. C. Tertiary consumers are called omnivores or animals that eat both plants and animals. A food chain shows the feeding relationship between different living things in a particular environment or habitat. 
It represents a series of events in which food and energy are transferred from one organism in an ecosystem to another. An arrow indicates that an organism is eaten by another organism. However, not every plant or animal gets eaten. When they die, they rot. Detritus refers to the dead and rotting bodies of plants and animals. They are acted on by bacteria which break down the stored energy in their bodies into materials that can be used by other animals. In this way, nutrients and energy are cycled in nature. A food web shows that most organisms eat and are eaten by several other organisms. Estuary and intertidal food webs differ from other ecosystems because the primary producers are not consumed by herbivores. Most organic materials enter the food web as detritus. An animal that feeds on detritus is called detritivore. To check how well you understood the lesson, let us have a short exercise. Identify what is being asked. 1. What is the source of energy for all living things? The answer is sun. 2. What do you call the dead and rotting bodies of plants and animals? The answer is detritus. 3. What do you call an organism that eats meat only? The answer is carnivore. 4. What is a relationship in which one organism is harmed as the other gets the benefits? The answer is parasitism. 5. What do you call an organism that can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis? The answer is autotroph or producer. You are awesome. You've got them right.